This is sort of a sequel to something I just recorded and in real time will have uploaded a week before this, uh, where I talked about Stardew Valley singles and how I thought they would do on the show Survivor. Uh, this is a follow up with some of the just other NPCs from the game wanted to talk about how I think they do. Uh, you see at the bottom there I've got Linus who I didn't know how to talk about because how do you talk about a, a homeless person how they do on Survivor? I feel like there's not a way to do that without being insensitive. Um, as a character though, I love Linus. He's so sweet. Gives you a good recipe early on. Uh, Pam, complicated character, but also I, I, I always, I've always i had a soft spot for Pam. I, I didn't know until my m most recent playthrough going for perfection that you can fix up uh, fix her up a house and I was also married to Penny in that playthrough and I was like this is great I'm getting points with the mother-in-law um, And the dwarf is there just because uh, he looks cool <laughs> uh, But anyways the characters we're talked about today. We've got Caroline uh, Jody Marnie Robin Clint Demetrius Gus Kent Lewis Pierre Willie and the wizard um, now With the singles there are a lot of hard events with these guys some there are some but not you know, they're not, they don't go as in depth with the other ones. And even with that, there's a lot of speculation and creating narratives for me to do this. And I'm going to do that again here. So don't take this too seriously. It's just me crafting a narrative or trying to hone in on the few things I've got. Um, so yeah, let's hop in. First up is Caroline, who I have... Going pre-merge, uh, we don't know too much about Caroline, but she seems she seems like a you know just average wife and mom, I guess. She grows tea as a hobby. It's good to have hobbies. Uh, we see her kind of pick at Abigail sometimes, not too much. She possibly <laughs> uh, had an affair or got pregnant with Abigail from a wizard before Marin Pierre. It's very unclear, but that's maybe what happened. Um, Mary's Pierre, who the fan base hates, so she probably is maligned for that. I've always liked Caroline because I was a big tea sapling guy, although now with the new update, um, it's not fully nerfed. You, there's still some way to make some scratch out of it. It just takes more time, but... Um, in terms of how she do on Survivor, the things that I am thinking about are like, she is married to Pierre, had something going on with the wizard, and is kind of just like your average mom with a teenage daughter is what it seems like to me. So I've got just like, pretty much just those things to go off of. And like it's tea. Tea. <laughs> um... So it's between post-merge or pre-merge. There's not enough to go Soul Survivor. I can't really think of a narrative that gets her to post-merge. I was just like, your average person around camp maybe tries the flirt game, but probably not. <laughs> maybe a young Caroline. Uh, so I just had her pre-merge. I didn't know what else to do with her, honestly. Um, this is, I guess I have her here for all the people that are upset about tea saplings. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> let's move on. I wish I had a better narrative for the first one in this, but... And now we've got Jody, who I also don't have much else for, but... Jody, I've got post-merge. Um, we have... There are more things in my mind of Jody being nice. Like, she gets mad at Sam in that cutscene and then apologizes. Um, there's cutscenes with her and Kent where they're struggling with Kent's PTSD, but they come together and are sweet. Uh, you bring her a fish for a quest, then she cooks you dinner, and I like that, so. Just seems like a pretty normal lady. Got a lot on her plate with her husband being away, and that's gotta be tough, so. I don't know. I got her post-merge. Less messy than Caroline. Caroline's mess is a legend, though. We don't know that, you know, she hooked up with a wizard, but probably. And we don't know the timeline of that either. With Jody... All I've got is that she seems like a nice, normal lady, for the most part. Marnie. Now this is where it gets juicy. I have Marnie's sole survivor. This might upset people, because, you know, people are always like, Marnie, I, I want to buy food for my animals, but she's not home. Well, now with the update, you can just buy a thing and go there and buy animals to your heart's content. Um, and it's like, oh, she's with Lewis, but blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, 
Marnie's getting probably a tax break, and even if she's not, she runs a farm. She's looking after Shane and Jazz, which is cool. I like that. She's sweet. Uh, likes animals, which I like. She's. We know f we can easily look at her life and background and be like, she will be good at around camp. Um, good at <laughs> uh, getting in with. That sounds icky, but that's not how I mean it. Uh, authority figures? Is it? No, that sounds gross. Uh, likeable, sociable. Handles big personalities, that's what I'm going to say. That, I feel, that sounds less gross. But anyways, I like Marnie, she seems sweet. Good background. Is with Lewis, which is funny. Soul Survivor. I just feel like Marnie could thrive on the island. Uh, she'd be cool with letting someone else call the shots, and they can take the shot. Or they can be taken out, and then Marnie is there. It's the victor. That's what I've got. Also, cool name. Marnie. Never heard that somewhere else before. Robin. Everybody likes Robin. Robin, you know would be good around camp. She's a carpenter. Her husband's a big science guy. So maybe some of that's rubbed off. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that would what that applies for Survivor, but uh, I just feel like Robin is like I get Kim Spradlin vibes. That's what it is, honestly. She's gonna be good around camp. She can build a good shelter. I feel like she'll be good in challenges. Everybody likes Robin. There are mods so you can marry Robin. Easy soul survivor. I don't even need to get into a whole thing. Like it's just so obvious that she would win. I think so. Boom. It's, it's, there it is. Clint. <laughs> Everybody hates Clint. Uh, Clint is someone whose cutscenes I pay the least attention to. I like that. He, I think he's a good blacksmith, if nothing else. You get your stuff back pretty quick. Um, he's breaking open geodes. He's got a nice beard. I just noticed that he's wearing a turtleneck. Uh, I never thought of it as a turtleneck before. And that that's really... that. I feel justified in putting him pre-merge. You can't wear a turtleneck on the island. Uh, but he's all, all about Emily. Can't can't make it happen. I feel like he'd he'd be in my mind. He's like a big quiet guy, and I think he wouldn't be the first boot because you'd want him for challenges. And then you're like, I don't know where Clint's head is at. Let's just get him out. And that's kind of what I have for Clint. Maybe he'll have a crush on someone in his tribe or cross tribe, and we'll have like a Billy Garcia moment from Cook Islands. That's the dream. That's what I've got for Clint. Demetrius. I have him pre-merged also. He just comes off a little snobby. Um, there's the cutscene where, I think it's a Maru Heart cutscene, not a Demetrius one, but where he's like, he gets a little weird with you. Uh, <laughs> which I don't think should impact how you do on Survivor, but it's funny to me the sort of been in that sort of <laughs> situation. <laughs> where someone's dad is like real weird with you. Um, but I, I, I don't mind Demetrius. He, he seems like he's a strong personality, but like Robin loves him and I, I trust Robin's judgment. Some people, uh, just communicate differently from others and that's okay. Uh, it doesn't help you in Survivor though. Like I feel like he'd be too, I think he'd be fine on the island. He'd be handy around camp, but I think he might rub people the wrong way, uh, because I think he'd be the type of guy that it's like, if you don't listen to him, he'll get annoyed, but he'll want you to listen to him. And you'll be tired of listening to him. <laughs> he just seems too much of a know-it-all. Um, and not the, like, Rob has a podcast kind, so. I think he's, he's pre-merged, but. Someone that uh, was always easy to get the hearts up for, because you just need fish that you get close to his house. So, yeah, moving on. Gus! I love Gus. He's a saloon owner. On the beach making drinks. If he unlocked Ginger Island. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I have him as Soul Survivor. In my mind... Like, the, you only get like one or two cutscenes with Gus, I believe. 
and he's just very like goofy and friendly and sweet. In my mind, he's like uh, he's got like jam jam energy from Survivor 44. I just feel like he he'd be excited to play Survivor. He'd get along with everybody. He'd be funny in confessionals. And he'd be good on the island. I don't know. I just, for whatever reason, I just see, like, Gus thriving on Survivor. And I don't know much more than that. I guess uh, someone that works a saloon like that, you gotta be sociable. So maybe that's part of it. But I don't know. It's just, I just look at Gus and I feel joy. So I have him as a sole survivor. Kent. So in my last one, I thought about and talked about Alex as, like, I don't normally think of people as like they're in Soul Survivor because of Challenge Beast narrative sort of thing, but I have that for Kent. Uh, we have seen uh, an ex-military guy win Survivor, uh, and we've seen that narrative play out in the show. So I'm like, eh, it's not unrealistic to have that with the Stardew Valley character. Uh, we had Ben in Survivor 35, which people did not like. <laughs> uh, but I don't know, maybe people will like Kent more. I like Kent, he's very friendly to the farmer, uh, easy to befriend, even they have to wait till year two if you're trying to speed run. But I'm not a speed runner. I've got, you know, I don't know. If, I was gonna say don't have the time, but then realize that doesn't make sense. But anyways, uh, Kent, I just feel like he, I don't know. He, he's someone that I think people would respect. He's likable to the player. And I, I hope that translates to other people. Um, and there is a narrative of a, a, a military guy winning Survivor. So I'm like, hey, it can happen in real Survivor. It can happen in Stardew Valley Survivor. So uh, I think he'd be good at challenges. He'd be good around camp. Yeah. I think, you know. And he's, he's, he's an outward friendly guy to the farmers. That's what I've got. Mayor Lewis. Uh, Mayor Lewis is a merge boot. He worries too much about things that he should. He he doesn't need to hide his relationship with Marnie. But he does. Um, <laughs> uh, he does give you money sometimes for like helping out the community, which is cool. I don't, know, I don't know much. I don't. Know, I don't have much else to say. Uh, easy to befriend because oh, what's the crop he likes that you can get early? Peppers? It's like the red thing. I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head. Anyways, uh, Lewis has merge bit under. He worries about things that he doesn't need to. He's in charge, and I feel like would really struggle if someone else ran for mayor. So I've got. I've got Lewis as a merge bit. Powerful stash. Let your love with Marnie be known, bro. And then maybe you can be post merch. But until then, you're a merch boot. Pierre. Uh, I have Pierre as post merch. In my mind, my, my narrative for Pierre, um, this is mostly because the fan base will like dog up Pierre. I'm, I'm like, I don't have strong thoughts on Pierre. Uh, but my narrative is he's like the villain of the season. He's like a full like and like a controversial villain, like a real Russell Hans. <laughs> or it's like he's doing crazy stuff. Pierre's pulling idols out of thin air. He's using them and taking out, you know, the 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 cores and the, the I don't know. <laughs> Pierre's out there making waves and not in a good way and he gets to the end and he gets no votes or he's taken out at like final four or five I don't I don't know I just have I've have strong villain vibes from Pierre it's not just because of the random picture I got off Google um, but that does not help his case it's just like the fan base thinks of Pierre as a villain and I am inclined to go with that because I I don't have strong enough feelings one way or the other about Pierre uh, He's, he's, he's a little, he seems a little bunny hungry, but you know, you gotta you gotta make your scratch in life. <laughs> but uh, Pierre, I see him looking for idols, getting in trouble for it, playing idols successfully, uh, shaking up the status quo, struggling to win at the end with the jury vote, and maybe not even getting there. That's my, that's the path I see for Pierre and Willie. Just a quiet fisherman. Uh, he'd do well on the island. I think he'd be a 
uh, a reliable ally, not someone that... He, because he's a man of few words, I don't think he could necessarily win at the end, but I think people would respect him, so he'd maybe be taken out early. He could be like a Rupert type. Rupert was like... When you think of Fisherman on Sparrow, you probably think of Rupert and Ozzy, I guess. And Willie could be up there with them. <laughs> uh, I like Willie because I like fishing. But... I still see him post merge. I, I think he'd be either too well liked or respected to get to the end, despite not being a, a big talker, or he would be a big talker and would get to the end and would not get votes, maybe? One of those two. That's what I've got for Willy. Last but not least, the wizard. I mean, the wizard, he has actual magic, so in my mind, he's a sole survivor. He does have a scorned ex wife, and the theory based off the info from the game is that he cheated on his wife with Caroline uh, and is the father of Abigail which is very juicy and saucy stuff but, so anyway socially he, he maybe is a little reckless but he does have actual magic which I assume would help you in Survivor he can maybe make a a, a shelter appear out of thin air, or maybe you can make the Junimas go find you coconuts to eat. Stuff like that. So I've got him as a soul survivor. You can't fight against actual magic, so that's that's what I've got, but that's everybody. This was a lot of fun to do. Yeah. <laughs> I love Stardew Valley. Uh, glad that I thought of another reason to talk about it. One thing I would really like to do, and maybe I'll do when the update comes to a uh, Switch, which is mostly where I play it, is like, uh, people do like the 100 days on Stardew, or the 114 or 16, they go for the full the full year. Uh, shout out Habu for that. Um, but I want to do, because I make everything in PowerPoint, like, what if I did like 100 slides of <laughs> Stardew Valley? <laughs> or I like write down what I did each day take a screenshot at one point during the day and then just do that. that would, I think that would be fun for me at least, so I might do that at some point. Uh, I don't know what other Stardew Valley content I could, I could make, but I'm sure I'll think of something because I will always find an excuse to talk about this game because I love it and think about it too much, but for now, that's it. Thank you and goodbye.